Hey everybody, nice to see you all. Uh, I was out here last year talking about uh, the culture of lock sport and uh, some of what had been going on up until that point. Uh, this talk today, in a lot of ways, is kind of a year in the life, one year recap of what's been going on. Um, but there have been a lot of exciting developments and I think we have uh, a lot of good things to talk about. So, name of the talk, How to Make Friends and Influence Lock Manufacturers. Uh, I'm Skylar Town. This is John King right here. Let's see if I can get Wrestling with oh, the maybe not. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is Skylar, so my name is John King. You're going to hear a little bit more about me later. Um, I haven't slept in 48 hours. I'm a little intoxicated. <laughs> Out of curiosity, last night and this morning, who had a drunken conversation with me? Anybody? <laughs> Excellent. About 10 minutes ago. <laughs> um, all right, so how to make friends and influence lock manufacturers. The lock and key. Uh, the distinguished device of civilization and enlightenment. Um, or at the very least, that nice quote makes you feel really important if you're a lock picker. All right, I am uh, a tool member. That's the Open Organization of Lock Pickers. Uh, I was actually a co-founder of the United States chapter of that. Uh, I've since stepped down from the board, but I remain a very active member uh, and love that organization. Uh, I'm also involved with NDE Magazine. That's Non-Destructive Entry Magazine. Um, I realize I forgot to put the website on here. I'm the executive ed editor. That's N-D-E-M-A-G, M-A-G dot com. This is the DEF CON preview cover. Um, and I'm trying to tell people that's Liv Tyler, but it's not going over. Uh, anyway, uh, this will be coming out later on today, so uh, check the website, check it out. Uh, it's got a lot of information about the upcoming contests that are going to be going on all weekend long. All right, let's talk. Uh, I'm going to quickly go over what we're going to cover here today. Uh, it's in talk in four parts, basically. We're going to talk about the RoboKey system at the top. Uh, it's an incredible new lock that was very much developed within the LockSport community. They relied heavily on input from the community and uh, are well-traveled in it as well. So we're going to talk a little bit about that company and the lock that they built. Uh, we're also going to talk about QuickSet, a company that you wouldn't usually talk about in the course of you know, a high security lock discussion or whatever the case may be. Um, but they dramatically reinvented their product line and we're going to talk about the reasons behind that, the process they went through, uh, and a little bit about what's going on with the new generation. Again, a lot of this is tied into a direct response to the LockSport community. We'll also be talking about the ABUS Plus system. This is a disk, disk detainer system, um, a near comical flaw in it, um, which was just sort of a forest for the trees thing that a lock picker came up with. Uh, he tracked down a way to decode it very consistently. Uh, the company themselves completely changed the, the design of it, and we're going to talk about the challenge they issued him after that. We'll cover the whole thing. And of course, Medico, uh, and this is where John will be talking. Uh, the uh, Medico and the magazine, NDE Magazine, worked together with, uh, with the company and John in order to release the exploit via the magazine in our last issue. Um, and John did quite a bit of work with them, and he's going to cover all the bases on that and, uh, and do a demo for you right on stage, opening up a Medico M3, their newest generation. All right, now in the uh, previous uh, slides, the ones that you'll have on the CD or on the website or whatever the case may be, there's going to be a super secret announcement. Uh, I'll tell you right now that announcement was going to be about a grant program for high security lock research. The fact of the matter is the magazine is not organized enough at this time to go forward with that, so that's going to be delayed perhaps until another con. Uh, so there's your announcement. Sorry, it's a disappointment. You ruined the surprise. <laughs> All right. Uh, first of all, I want to cover the making friends portion of this. This is fairly fast. Uh, all I really have to say about making friends is uh, don't be a jerk uh, and tell people if you see something they're wearing that looks nice. It works really, really well. Um, but as far as making friends and communicating with lock manufacturers, uh, Barry Wells, who's in the audience here today, um, he actually wrote a wonderful piece for the magazine in our last issue uh, that's kind of a simple road map to carrying out responsible disclosure. And I'm just going to kind of cover his bullet points and talk a little bit about each one of those. I think it serves as a really convenient guide to folks who are going to be involving themselves in this field at any level. First of all, be professional. Approach them professionally. Uh, approach the company with, you know, proper language. Uh, don't, you know, no leet speak or anything like this. Uh, present yourself in a respectable manner and you're more likely to be respected. Uh, be honest. 
if you have something theoretical that you haven't actually managed to accomplish yourself, don't tell them that you've broken their lock, that everything is defeated. Uh, be, be very clear with what it is that you've done with their product, um, which transitions into being thorough. Be very distinct about what locks you attacked, how many locks they were, uh, e exactly the method by which you did it, et cetera, et cetera. Make sure that you cover all of your bases. Um, you're going to have to be very detail-oriented when you're going to be approaching a manufacturer. You, you want to have the whole package put together for them. Be very clear with them as well about your intentions behind this. What is it that you want them to do about this? Do you want to have them disclose it, do you want the product fixed, whatever the case may be. Um, the, be. Be very clear with your initial intention when you're walking in. You do not want to be misrepresented or misunderstood. Um, don't ask for money. This is one that's it's kind of almost a personal thing. There's, there's been a lot of debate about this. Um, we personally believe that once you involve money, that's when things go wrong. Especially um, if you come to a manufacturer and, for example, they offer to pay you, right there, that's, the, the things can go wrong. For example, uh, shut up money. The public should know about this kind of thing, we think. And it's, it's just not worth it. That's, that, that's an arena that you don't want to tango in. Tango? Tango. Like and there, there is a very thin line between uh, consulting and extortion. They and, can be careful if you walk. And, and it's thin to the point where they can pin you with that, you know? The, so you need to take very good care of yourself uh, when you're approaching this. Be prepared. Um, this uh, Barry outlined an extraordinary system by which he approaches new locks when they need to be reviewed. Um, he receives 10 of them. He takes eight of those, sets two aside, and deal with those later. Of the eight, he disassembles several of them and refines and, and attacks uh, the rest. He refines his attack. Uh, by disassembling it, you're able to see what it is they've changed to defeat your previous iteration of your attack um, so that you can update it and, and, uh, and attack another small subset of those cylinders. Um, once you've done that, and this is very important, the two that you've set aside, those are for when they come calling, when they visit you, or when you have to visit them so that you have a sealed cylinder that they have put into your hands that you can open for them by the same methods, showing that your attack works across the bar, you know, works universally. Yes? Um, also, the purpose of uh, asking for so many locks and taking them apart, you don't want the company pulling a fast one on you. Basically, you're challenging their product and their design. You don't want them to implement features that are not standard to try to trip you up whenever you're opening these locks. Absolutely. Uh, and finally, do not sign non-disclosure agreements. Um, these will remove your ability to report on the situation independently. They will tie you to that company and they will keep you from being able to, to pursue disclosure beyond your interaction with that company. Um, you need to remain an independent agent, um, and there are, there are people who can support you in this. You know, there, there is uh, the open organization of lock pickers. Barry uh, has made it clear that he's comfortable being contacted um, via the magazine. Of course, anybody at NDE, anybody at Tool US, et cetera, et cetera. There's a fantastic community out there who can support you through this. So don't sign the NDAs. Remain an independent agent when you're working on this. All right, so with the roadmap of disclosure covered, let's actually get into the meat of the talk. So this is the RoboKey system. Uh, <laughs> this should be the first time many of you have seen this. Um, it's a really nice quote out of John. Uh, it's easy to love your own baby, but we wanted to get this out into the community. We figured they wouldn't be shy about telling us what was wrong with it. <laughs> uh, it's absolutely true. <clears throat> So, a little bit of background on the company. John and Bob Laughlin, uh, Lachlan, sorry. Uh, John was a telecommunications engineer. Uh, when that bubble burst, he got together with his father, Bob, who was a retired lock engineer. Um, the two of them got together, and uh, his father had previously formed a company called Stanton Concepts with his other brother, Tom. This was some um, couple of decades ago, I guess. But they revived the brand and started working together. The inspiration behind the lock and behind their, uh, and behind their renewed interest in the security field, um, they both have a healthy interest in security to begin with. Um, as I said, Bob was a retired lock engineer. He, uh, 
He, he and a couple of folks bought out a company in Connecticut that was producing um, uh, the Tough Lock. I don't know if any of you have ever heard of it. Uh, they had a